Now to the Horn of Africa, where one nation's ambitious tourism targets are making the headlines this week. Ethiopia hopes to bring home $3 billion in tourism revenues next year by swapping sea, sand and safaris for stunning rock-cut churches and sulphur formations. If they reach their revenue goals by 2015, they will overtake regional rivals Kenya and Tanzania as the leading centre of African tourism. The coffee-producing country has often been seen as an emblem of African independence, being one of the founding members of the UN and boasting rapid economic growth since the end of its civil war in 1991. However, it remains one of Africa's poorest states and is prone to periodic droughts and famines which have repeatedly halted its development. Very pleased to say that uh, joining us now is Ethiopia's ambassador to the United Kingdom, His Excellency Bern Hanu Kebede. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Um, your Excellency, you mention Ethiopia to most people and their first thoughts are famine and war. They don't think holiday. So how can you change that? Famine is uh, a history in Ethiopia. The country has been registering double-digit growth. And this growth has been recognized by international financial institutions. And Ethiopia has an ambitious plan, uh, which is really working very well, to make the best use of our tourism sector. This is a country that has rich history, culture, natural beauty. And it's a country uh, that has uh, the oldest kingdom, the Aksumais kingdom. There are so many things to show to international tourists. But first, before you get the tourists, you have to overcome these, these preconceptions. So um, how do you do that? How do you get that message out? Because as you say, the, the, those images may well be decades old, but they're still very prevalent in the, in the public perception. I agree with you. I agree with you. Sometimes uh, we, it is also the media which is playing it. And, uh, so how do you change that? We have, we have to invite a lot of people to see what we have been doing in Ethiopia, how Ethiopia has transformed socially, economically and politically to see for themselves. And tourism is one of the mechanisms of course, you generate revenue. At the same time, people would have the chance to see on the ground what is happening. And of course, we have to use public diplomacy and communication and mechanism have to improve a lot to send the exact message of Ethiopia. So, okay, so you've got to get the message out. Um, you, you talked about your country's rapid economic growth. That's great, but it's still one of Africa's poorest countries. Does it have the, the physical and security infrastructure that certainly Western no, tourists, one of Africa's poorest it, it, countries? It's a country that is growing. It is a country that has drastically uh, reduced poverty. It's a country that has a huge emerging cl middle class. The situation is changing. If we deal with the past, yes, Ethiopia has been poor. Ethiopia has been a victim of famine drought, but it's 30 years back. In the last 21 years, the ch you know, ch things have changed. Ethiopia is another, in another and a better economic and social trajectory. So does the country have the physical and security infrastructure that certainly Western tourists take for granted elsewhere? Absolutely. The roads, the hospitals, the, the hotels? Uh, abs ab absolutely. We, we have a lot of five-star brand hotels that have been built the last 21 years like uh, Sheraton, Hilton, Radisson, and many international brand hotels and lodges, four-star, three-star hotels. And of course, in the last 21 years, we have built 136,000 kilometers of road network. And we are building a railway of 2,400. And uh, some of them are in the almost to be completed by the end of uh, to, to, to 2015. So Ethiopia so, is open for business and waiting to welcome uh, foreign tourists. At the moment... Uh, it, in and in fact, brand companies are investing, like Diageo, Unilever, and big companies like H&M are investing in Ethiopia. So this is a country that has changed completely, and this is a country that is, that is uh, implementing a proper program. 70% of its investment is on social... Uh, infrastructure on schools, uh, water, health, and uh, the country that is investing hugely on infrastructure. This is going to be a huge uh, powerhouse for Africa. Okay, let's hope so. Where do your tourists come from at the moment? They come from all over the world, from the Gulf states, from the United States, from Germany, uh, f f from all over Europe. And where are you hoping to, to target the increase from? Where do you hope they, that they will come from? Well, from Europe and from the Gulf countries and from the United States. And so in, in the capital, uh, Addis Ababa, uh, as you were saying, construction is booming. Uh, metro there are due to be open next year. 
how do you make sure that the, the benefits do trickle down to, uh, to the, the people at the, the lowest strata? We, we have developed a tourism strategy in Ethiopia, which is chaired by the Prime Minister himself. And uh, we have a clear strategy where to go about, where to reach by the end of 2015 and beyond. And our ambition is to be one of the five tourist destinations in Africa. And uh, to that extent, we have achieved to some extent. The number of tourists coming to Ethiopia is now almost about one million. We started from the lost figure of 200 or 300,000. So, you, uh, clearly, uh, high ambitions. Tell me about the hospitality industry in your, your country. Is that geared up to take this, this increase in numbers? Absolutely. Well, we have built a lot of hotels. We have lodges. In our historical sites, we have uh, uh, hotels to accommodate the coming, tourists coming to visit Ethiopia. We have the best airlines in Africa which flies to 83 destinations because tourism doesn't mean only the, the hospitality but it needs transport infrastructure as you rightly pointed out. So we are developing, it's a multifaceted development strategy pro that we have adopted for our tourism sector. Uh, briefly, uh, the Ethiopian Embassy is running an event on the 5th of November Absolutely. called the Rise and Fall of the Askumite uh, Kingdom. Can you tell us briefly a bit more about that? The Askumite Kingdom is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. You find the seven obelisks, the gigantic obelisks in Aksum. You have also the palace of Queen of Sheba. And we are going to talk about that. And it is going to be done. It's going to be presented by a famous historian, Professor Philipson, at the Royal Geographical Society. Your Excellency, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you very much. Thank you.